All right, what is going on guys? So very different war today uh, than all my other war videos because I'm actually on backup today because I was hanging with my buddies uh, during when the war started and I didn't really want to have to worry about taking a uh, path to start with. So this is more at nighttime. As you can see, the war's already started for like nine hours and someone needed help on path one. They had a Korg that they had some problems with. They tried Namor, they timed out. And I think they used Void and they timed out again, but they finished him and then they got to Captain Marvel here and they tried Void and uh, just Void's not a very good matchup against Captain Marvel on this node combination. So I was like, all right, I'm coming. Brought in my boy Sim Supreme, brought Ghost, and we brought Wasp. So we're gonna put in some work here. First up, we gotta get through this Captain Marvel though. And I was slightly worried about it because uh, it's, normally we just send Seton on path one and he takes care of all this stuff with Warlock. So I think we're gonna go back to doing that in the future. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be having to take this Captain Marvel and I don't have anyone to stop the healing. So I'm just gonna have to, uh, you know, damage through it with some supreme so that's the plan you're gonna pop a regen boost some mystic boost and a little green attack boost so pretty much the plan is just to get to an l3 and then uh we're gonna cycle all our buffs get to an l2 and then the l2 should just give us another l2 and then two l2s and she should be dead because we should be hitting crazily hard at that point so jumping in here she already has 18 binary charges from the last fight because you know how they carry over uh so i really just gotta be on top of uh evading all the specials here and right here the binary when she goes into it, she loses all of uh, her debuffs. So, and now I have to reapply all my staggers to get uh, to get rid of all that. So that's super annoying. She's playing super aggressive, uh, but she's throwing those specials kind of sketchy. But we managed to evade everything so far. On top of the evade game, now I'm gonna drop this L3. This is gonna nullify all her buffs. It's gonna give us some power through Mystic Dispersion. Uh, we're gonna get a, about a bar of power from our natural abilities and even some more power from the Mystic Boost. So boom, you can see we're almost at two bars. We had another special one. I'm gonna drop this L2 and it does some great damage. 9K, 10K, 14K gives me another L2. I go to drop it, uh, but I get too much power and I go to L3. She also triggered her buffet right there and she shot up like 20%, she went from 20% to 42%. So the healing is pretty crazy, but our L3 hits super hard with all those armor breaks and the bleed's enough to just kill her afterwards. So a little bit of a sketchy fight. Uh, at first going in, I was a little unsure, but it went phenomenally, man. Uh, and then next up we had a Modoc here. Hector went ahead and took that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this Killmonger. Someone had an Omega that I wanted to take. I wanted them to take it, but I was boosted. I didn't know when they were gonna hop on. I'm like, all right, I'll just try to take this with Ghost. Not too sure how it's going to go, but uh, how bad can it be? All right, so this node, he's immune to debuff effects. Uh, the plan is really just to get to a special one. Uh, I could special lock one, so I'll get the debuff, and willpower will heal me. So if I take some reverberation damage here or there, I'll be all right. The main thing that I need to worry about, though, is not getting backed against the wall. Because if I get backed against the wall and he throws a heavy attack, I'm going to eat it to the face. Because I cannot evade Killmonger's heavy attack. It's one of the few in the game that I just I can't evade against the wall. Uh, I should probably practice it. But, uh, yeah, I just, I'm not good at evading it. I also need to stay on top of baiting out his specials. So when he, I trigger the reverberation, it's not too big. But I'm doing kind of a poor job at that. All right, here he has a bar of power when it's triggered. So I, I don't really want to attack him. You can see I took 2,000 damage for one hit right there so i'm just kind of trying to chill here uh he throws a heavy but i wasn't quite up against the wall yet so we're okay pushing him back a bit here he's about to trigger reverberation again so i want to bait out the special attack here but it was too late I mistimed it again uh but i'm healing up from this uh power lock debuff so that's nice right here he throws the heavy and boom i take it to the face 10k damage it's really annoying of course it crit uh, we shrug off the bleed and turn it into a fury though so that helps with our damage a little bit right here We're against the wall a wall phasing. I've never really done that with ghost before kind of weird uh, But I'm just like, all right. He's close enough. Let me just throw my l1 It should be enough to kill him and it is so kind of a sketchy fight. I took one heavy to the face uh, Only one hit but that to lost me half my health along with some reverberation and a little bit of the bleed debuff I was like, uh, that's kind of annoying. Gonna have to pop a couple potions into Ghost, but that's all right. So next up, we have too many bosses. So I brought Ghost for this Quake. I wasn't planning on using her for Killmonger, but I did. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw two potions into Ghost. Uh, if this fight goes as I'm expecting it to, I won't need them, but just to play it safe, because you never know what might happen. So another debuff immunity node, so many of these, uh, and so we're taking it with Ghost. So, you know, Quake's super annoying because if you happen to bait out a heavy attack by accident, you know, you get the aftershocks on you, uh, and when those expire, they have a chance to stun you, and they also do a bunch of damage to you. Uh, that's, that's why Ghost is just so great for fighting Quakes here, because 
you know, Ghost has her own way of going in. Uh, also, you can phase through Quake's L1, so you don't even have to really worry about uh, evading them, so that's super nice. Uh, this Quake uh, also has suicides on, so if uh, if we take some concussion damage or something, it's going to be a lot of damage because this guy plays with uh, suicides. So kind of a smart placement, placing on the debuff immunity um, could really mess you up because it would just be more damage if you uh, got those concussions on you, or the aftershocks, I should say. Uh, but yeah, that fight went as expected. Again, we didn't even need the potions on Ghost, but, you know, whatever. We use them anyways. I, I buy them from Glory every day for that reason, for War and for AQ. If I screw up, it's all good. So next up, we get to Annihilus. Uh, now, I still have the Mystic boost, still have the little 10% green boost, and I also put on a Power Star 1 boost, because I want to get to my L3 as quickly as possible. And I'm not really the best at fighting Annihilus. I don't really know how he works, to be honest. Um... I'm going to go for an intercept at the start of the fight, nail that intercept. That's really how I get my ins on Annihilus, typically. I just intercept him. Normally, you can't beat the heavies, but since he's staggered, I can. Uh, right here, I beat out the L1. It's an unblockable special one, so I just tried to keep my distance on him there. Uh, right there, go for another intercept. Uh, and now I'm in uh, my armor phase. I just need to nullify one more buff. Uh, puts me to 100 genetic potential, and now I'll drop my special three. It's going to get all my uh, trigger all my phases, and then we're going to be we're going to be good. Once I get to my L2, I should be able to just cycle those with the Mystic Boost, and I should be able to just shred this Annihilus. So right here he's at an L2, and he just throws it. So I'm like, all right, that's okay. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to bait out a little bit of a heavy attack here. Boom, he throws it. Perfect. Uh, but I don't quite get to my L2. Go for an intercept. Nail it. Boom. Now I get to my L2. Drop that. Boom. Does some phenomenal damage, but I get too much power again. Uh, this pushes me to an L3, so I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll just drop this L3, and it is more than enough to just go ahead and kill him because we have all those armor breaks on him. We have the Fury, he is toast. So that was my path, I came in, cleaned it up on backup, uh, took two fights on path one and two mini bosses, no deaths, we we're looking good. I think I used a couple of potions, uh, but that's fine. Let's see, yeah, two potions, that's fine. So that was all I did this war, not a whole lot, but uh, my buddy Kakarot was on path number nine. He sent me over some gameplay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that. So uh, he has the Aegis nodes. First up, he has an Ebony Maw, and he's never, I don't know if he's fought Ebony Maw on uh, the Aegis Heavy before, but he's bringing in his Wasp, uh, and his Wasp is only rank three, a rank three five-star champion, which you typically don't wanna do in Alliance War, but uh, he's going for it, man, because his other champs, you know, Ghost, uh, and, you know, Ghost is a terrible matchup versus Ebony Maw. Ghost and Corvus, they're just so bad. So, as you can see, Wasp is one of the best options for this node, no matter who's on it. Uh, because, man, Wasp, with her heavy attacks, uh, it's just so easy to weave them in when the opponent is uh, stunned. Because uh, it's a passive stun, so it's just it's so great, man. Guaranteed heavies, essentially. And boom, there you can, there we go. He's got all the uh, Aegis Indestructibles gone. Now he can really start dealing damage to Ebony Maw. And this guy also plays with Suicides again. This is a smart placement for Suicides because they're indestructible at the start of the fight, so it doesn't matter if Suicides are on or not. So, you know, Ebony Maw's going to be hitting harder to do the block through his degeneration if he applies that. Uh, if you screw up and accidentally get hit, he's going to be hitting harder with the Suicides. So, yeah, it's a pretty good placement here. The backup recovery gives this guy a lot of power, but uh, Kakarot's doing a good job of baiting those special attacks out. Uh, he's at another bar here. He's going to bait, bait this out as well. Uh, he's just waiting to bait that out. He's going to take the recoil damage, just playing it nice and safe. That's good. Uh, and he's going to go for another L2, and it's enough to go ahead and just kill his Ebony Maw. So that was an extremely well-fought fight. Rank 3 Wasp versus a Rank 5 Ebony Maw. They did really good there. And then next up, he had a Mr. Sinister on the next Aegis node, the Aegis Intercept. And he's going to go ahead and use Ghost. Now, I know what you're thinking, you know, Ghost versus Mr. Sinister... That's not really a good matchup, uh, but he's pretty much just going to be going for L3s. So uh, Ghost is really good for this node just to get off the intercepts because her phase intercepts actually count. Uh, I'm not too sure what happened at the start of the fight there, but he has a regen boost to heal some of that back. So right there, boom, intercept, intercept, intercept. He does it perfectly, takes off all three charges there. Uh, beautiful. Uh, pretty much how, how you want to do it is as soon as the opponent hits into your, your phase, you want to immediately retaliate, and then it'll count as an intercept. If you wait like a half a second too long, it won't count as an intercept. So you got to be really quick on it, and he did it very well there. Now he's going to use a couple of heavy attacks just to build up some furies, just to try to get his L3s to do more damage, which again, this is very smart. And as you can see, Ghost's L3, it hits, it hits all right. It hits all right. 
Uh, Smithson was at like 82. This takes him down to about 66 percentage, so not too bad. Uh, if you can get off like two more L3s, that should be enough to kill him. And he has two minutes, so he's on track to do that. Everything's looking pretty good here. And uh, yeah, so he's just going to keep on parrying, laying on the attack damage. Uh, he's going to go for some phased hits, but you know, it, it's fine if he phase hits. He's, he's just going to heal it up uh, with the crits. It's fine if he just parries and goes in. He's got a lot of health to work with. He's got time. You know, not really too much to worry about. He's just baiting out the L1s, which is good. That's what I like to do as well when fighting Mr. Sinister. I don't like pushing him to uh, the L2. It's super annoying. And you get the concussion on you, and then you can't use your phase or anything like that. So, yeah, no point in that. Uh, he's going to go for another L3 right here. I personally probably would have went for another heavy or two against the wall, see if... Um, could have got stacked up a couple more Furies, but that's fine. This uh, L3 still does some great damage. Mr. Sinister's at 26% now. He's looking good. He still has over a minute left. He's right on track to kill this Mr. Sinister on time. Looking pretty good. Ghost basic attacks with the Fury are actually hitting pretty hard. That was like 1,900. Not too bad there. Um, so it's looking pretty good. 10k crit, but you know, Mr. Sinister's going to heal that. So at this point, Kakarot's thinking 1L2, and he's going to die. So he goes for it. And he has the Wasp synergy, right? So he goes for the... Uh, the phase and throws it but mr sinister because he can block unblockable attacks he blocks it uh which i've been there i've been there i've tried that in a uh, 6.2 i was like why does he just block that i'm like oh yeah mr sinister he can block unblockable attacks oops but uh yeah guys that's gonna do it for this war me and kakarot's fights and you can see kakarot rocking the supreme legacy title he's a true true homie uh, but yeah, that's going to do it, guys. Hope you did enjoy two perspectives on this war. Thank you, Kakarot, for sending over the gameplay. He's a really good dude. We talk all the time in my battle group. We did win this war, which is awesome. Um, we're currently in another war that I'm recording right now. So uh, yeah, guys, let me know what you guys thought. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe to get some more content. Peace out.